<clears throat> All right. I called a meeting. Are we, are we on? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Call to order this, this meeting of Greenville City Council. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Council Member John DeWorkin. Here. Council Member Lillian Fleming. Here. Council Member Ken Gibson. Here. Council Member Will Brisington. Here. Council Member Russell Stahl. Here. Council Member Dorothy Dow. Here. Mayor Knox White. I'm here. I want to thank all the members of City Council for being available this morning on such short notice to consider this emergency ordinance. I'm asking the uh, City Manager, John McDonough, to make a few comments and introduce our uh, special guest as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning, members of Council. Uh, we are uh, very fortunate this morning to have Derek, uh, Dr. Eric Osman, who's the Vice Chair of Operations and Clinical Affairs in the Department of Emergency Medicine at Prisma Health with us today. And Eric's going to share a few thoughts with us uh, and be available to answer any questions that you all may have. So, Dr. Osman, I'll kick it over to you. Everybody here. Hey. Eric, you just need to unmute your mic or our IT guys. There you go. That should work. Yeah. Head it there just a second. Yeah, try it. Try it again to unmute the mic. Um. <clears throat> Do we have audio? Yes, you're good to go. All right, perfect. All right. uh, I'm from State over here at Greenville Memorial. So um, I. We're having audio difficulties. I guess buffering. Okay, just one moment. <clears throat> Hey John, is the audio still there? Yeah, I've got you on my phone and I've got good comms here, so I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna Okay. <clears throat> uh, I turned that off. So I'm calling from the talk room. Dr. Osman, we're trying to call you on your phone. Hello? Hi, Dr. Osman. Thank you, sir. Okay. Is that, is, is that good? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. All right. You can, so, you can turn um, your video you know, on. I just wanted to go over it. some of the uh, some of the numbers with all of you. Uh, audio is good now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so in, in the update, um, you know, right, right now, we are, I'm, I'm going to give you guys the numbers from yesterday at 5 p.m. from our briefing. Um, right now, we've got 34 patients uh, in the hospital with COVID-19 uh, spread amongst Memorial and all the hospitals in the upstate. Uh, we've had 60 total people that have been hospitalized since the beginning of this in the update. And yesterday, yesterday based on our DHEC numbers, and I think they've probably changed this morning, uh, we had 221 cases in the upstate. So between all of our inpatient and outpatient testing, uh, we've done around 2,149 tests. And out of all those tests, we've had 194 positive, which gives us a positivity rate of about 9%. And that's that's probably a good thing, and I'll, I'll come back to that number. So, so we have essentially added within the prison health system in the upstate somewhere around 100 surge beds throughout the hospital. So from an ICU standpoint, you know, right now, we're, we're very well prepared to deal with the volumes 
Um, we have also been working with some folks from the city and the county and also the Army National Guard to stand up a tier one um, alternate care site, which is really a self-care site, and also a tier two, which is sort of a, a minimal care, alternate care hospital site. And, um, and so we're having a meeting this morning and hopefully that'll push forward and we'll see that as early as next week. Um, the laboratory testing, which the last time we met, um, you know, I think I related to all of you that, you know, sort of a work in progress. We're, you know, doing a lot of work with local partners to get our own testing capability. That's that's very much come into fruition. We, we have robust in-house laboratory testing capabilities in both the upstate and the Midlands, um, essentially able to turn those tests around in around 2.3 hours for people that are coming into the hospital. And that's been absolutely essential for us in that, you know, once we know someone is negative, um, then we can discontinue all of the, you know, PPE use that we have to apply for someone who's, who's positive. Um, our, our stock of PPE is quite good. We've uh, been sourcing that, you know, really since the third week of January. We've also added a novel disinfection procedure for N95 masks using uh, vaporized hydrogen peroxide. And uh, it, so, so, so we feel very comfortable with that, that level of uh, PPE on hand and our ability to disinfect. And so, so overall, you know, I think, I think between, you know, the work that all of you have done with social distancing and promoting that message and keeping people home, um, and, you know, some of the, uh, you know, just, just fortunate location in, in the country, um, our, our upslope is relatively gentle compared to places like Georgia and Florida, but um, this is not the time to back off on any of this. In fact, it's probably the time to really double down on some of the social distancing measures and really discourage people from congregating and going outside other, other than for necessary activities. Because if we if we sort of stay on this trajectory, and this is the same trajectory that North Carolina is on, um, you, you know, we we can absolutely manage this event and and really not you know wreck the hospital system, sort of like what you're seeing in the Northeast. Um, right now, our overall death rate in the state of South Carolina or, or in the Upstate is 1.8 percent. Um, that, that's not a true death rate because we, we have no idea how many actual cases are out there. You know, we've only tested, you know, 21 <coughs> people within our, within our own system. So, so, you know, the denominator on the number of people with the disease is likely much higher. But, but I feel very comfortable with that number. I think, you know, that's consistent with, you know, a well-functioning, you know, North American style hospital uh, or health system. So, so uh, other than, you know, you know, really doubling down on social distancing and all those important NPIs, um, I, I feel like we're in a generally uh, decent place um, for, for where we are in this pandemic crisis. And with that, John, I'll, I'll turn it over to any questions. Okay. Uh, those are some encouraging words, but at the same time, you're giving us some good advice. It's very consistent with advice of uh, Dr. Deborah Burks yesterday. She's the head of the White House um, COVID-19 task force, as we all know. And she said the same thing you said, that this is the critical time everywhere in the, across the country to double down on social distancing. Even in those states and the state of home orders, that there's just so many so-called essential businesses out there, grocery stores, pharmacies, home improvement shops, et cetera, that is extremely important to focus on the social distancing aspect. And that's what I think um, we're all about tonight, today, this morning, that, that is. Any questions Mr. Mayor. or council comments about this uh, remarks? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I have a question for Dr. Osmond. Can you hear me? Yes, I, 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 I can hear. Good. Good. This is Will Brazington. Good morning, and thanks for not only your update, but your continued efforts on this front. I just wanted to ask a question of clarification. Those numbers that you just cited for us, um, are those upstate wide aggregated or simply the numbers uh, being witnessed within the Prisma Health System umbrella state? 
Yeah, so 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 a bit of a a bit of a blend. Um, the the 221, I, I believe, comes. So so most of the numbers that that I'm giving you all are coming from Prisma, um, with the exception of the, the the 221, which comes from a from a DHEC number. So. So I, I, I don't I don't have access to to the numbers you know that St. Francis has tested. I, I would assume based on just you know communicate regular communications with their team that their numbers look very similar to ours right now. And perhaps follow up. Um, I'm going to direct this at our city manager. Having heard that from, from Dr. Osman, are we in a position, um, Mr. City Manager, to be able to verify and confirm? out to entities like Bon Secours that we have a, you know, a real aggregated, compiled field, uh, if not in the city of Greenville, certainly within the Greenville community. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there's a lot of work going on. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a call at, at 11 o'clock with the major health care providers uh, to talk about that very thing. Um, all of those reporting numbers do fall under the auspices of DHEC mm -hmm. and Jay Merritt, who's the county's emergency management director. Uh, is the individual on a countywide basis that provides that information to us on a, on a daily basis. We also reach out to DHEC with our own contact and, and, and the numbers are very similar. So at least from that standpoint, uh, we're getting a very similar information. Good. Thank I'll you, John. That. Thank you. Okay. We have an, uh, that's, so thank you, Dr. Osman and thank you, Mr. Manager. As we know, we have the uh, virtual ordinance before us. I'll ask the clerk to read item 3A of our emergency ordinance. An ordinance, an emergency ordinance urging the governor to issue a statewide <clears throat> executive order requiring citizens to stay at home and acting citywide measures to ensure social distancing practices at certain businesses and matters related thereto. Okay, do you have a motion, please, and a second? So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, Council member. Council member Dworkin, you said you wish to abstain. Uh, yes, Mayor, I, I have a uh, uh, conflict. That, that is not my phone. I uh, got a conflict that I'm going to have to abstain. Okay. I think we understand. Okay, we should proceed with the discussion by council members. You all have the latest uh, revised version of this ordinance. Uh, is a product of regular work and is a follow up on the or our proposed ordinance of a week ago. Of course, a week ago, the governor identified five non essential businesses in the state of South Carolina. By doing that, he, by his order, order, he allowed a good number of so called essential businesses to operate. And we see it every day with the grocery stores open, of course, that's essential, and pharmacies. But there are a lot of a lot of businesses still operating on a very broadly defined list now of essential businesses. So this is uh, in response to that. We see a lot of activity at the home improvement shops in Greenville and across the state, grocery stores and places people have to go, and just a lot of activity in general because those businesses are allowed to open by the action of the governor. So this is to to address that with this uh, ordinance to to make a. Social distancing, not just a recommendation, uh, but a law in the city of Greenville. I think we have a number of reasonable ways and steps for uh, small businesses and all, all and, business, and bigger businesses to operate under those kind of rules. And that's what this ordinance is all about. Any discussion, further discussion by council members? We did make a few changes to the original, uh, the original ordinance that had been duly noted to us by the city attorney. Mayor, would you like for me just to walk through the changes for the record for folks that don't have that a be, copy in front that, of them? That may be good. Yes, sir. And we'll probably need a motion to amend um, should the council so desire. Um, the ordinance, uh, I believe, was posted uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, we received a lot of uh, comment from the business uh, community and their various trade uh, associations and we have incorporated uh, some changes to the ordinance and I'll walk through them with council. Um, in section two, we made this effective all at 10 a.m. tomorrow in order to give businesses some time to uh, put these measures in place. I think it's real important to note that the, uh, these measures are required unless they would work an undue hardship. And the undue hardship factors are spelled out in the ordinance 
that is designed to provide needed flexibility, recognizing that a one size fits all uh, approach is, is not appropriate. This, this analysis I'd also point out is borrowed from um, federal law uh, that, that judges are quite uh, familiar with when determining whether a workplace accommodation is reasonable. So these are accepted um, <clears throat> legal guideposts, if you will. Um, as far as the changes, uh, they are as follows. We removed uh, item number six, which called for the installation of protective barriers. Some of our business partners uh, were concerned that that was, would require plexiglass shielding and the like. That was not the intent, um, but in order to eliminate any confusion around that, we've removed it. Um, we've also added uh, some language to the undue hardship. One of the factors is that uh, uh, that uh, you would take into account is the availability of material and supplies. So for instance, hand sanitizer, if a business can't obtain hand sanitizer because it's not readily available, um, then they would not be in violation of this ordinance. We also added a provision that if a customer in the, in the store um, failed to adhere to the measures that the business is taking, that is not a violation of this ordinance. In other words, we're not going to hold the business liable for the conduct of its customers as long as they're uh, taking reasonable measures and doing what they should be doing. But that covers the changes. Be happy to answer any questions Council might have. And of course, uh, it's intended to protect both the customers, all of us who go to these businesses that may be open as essential services, but also to protect the employees of those businesses. And I want to acknowledge uh, Councilmember Dow's uh, addition. I don't think you mentioned it. Uh, Mike, uh, on the whereas part of the, of the ordinance, and I just want to read it because I think it is important uh, that whereas on March 31st, 2020, Governor McMaster issued executive order number 2020-17, where he, among other things, closed non-essential businesses, thereby putting the state into the business of defining what is essential and non-essential. He urged businesses to facilitate effective social distancing practices. So this ordinance, in our view, is perfectly consistent with, with the governor's orders or the state order, and that we're just putting some real teeth into those social distancing recommendations. Comment by anybody on council? Okay. Yeah. Do you need a motion to amend to add those, Mayor? Yes, Ms. Mayor. Yes, so, we're going to yeah. do that. Yes. We have a motion to amend. We need to pass the first. What's that? Do we need discussion before we recommend the amendment or not? We're in discussion, aren't we? I think we're in discussion, but I was going to take a motion to amend it. So move. The city attorney. Second. And a second. So we have a few discussion on the amendment, amending the for the revised version. Yeah, one short comment: the on section two, hand sanitizer and sanitation. Uh, I'm going to pay, change the language to san hand sanitizer or sanitizing products, uh, given the lack of availability of many of the hand sanitizing products. Um, and and also, I'm, sure I'm, I'm just nervous about the small businesses, and I know the hardship clause has been put in there, Mike, um, but we may need to uh, have a better definition of how does someone apply for that hardship piece? Okay, that's a good question for the city attorney. Yeah, so as uh, council member Stahl, it's not really an application. That is simply the uh, a factor that would go into a determination whether the ordinance has been violated or not. There is not an application for a hardship. That would be a determination that would be made um, either um, at the time a citation was issued, which again, the intent of this is not to issue citations. That's the last thing anybody wants to be doing. We fully expect uh, that we'll, uh, we'll have a great deal of cooperation from our business partners, but that would just go, that would be a, a factor, one of many that if a citation were issued that a municipal judge would take into account as to whether the ordinance had been filed. I think right. our, intention also Thank is you. To, our intention also is to allow uh, city officials to make site visits if necessary to check things out, see how things are going uh, at our convenience stores, grocery stores, other businesses that are still open for the, for the public good. Also, we, we do receive emails and phone calls here at, at City Hall from people who have seen something that, uh, that made them very uncomfortable.
at certain businesses that are open. So this allows us to respond to those comments by the public and concerns by our residents to actually check it out and see what's happening and hopefully have a conversation with the business owners. We're doing a certain amount of that now. This gives us a little extra authority to, to do that, to get their attention, if you will. We're also having informal discussions. I'll let the city manager talk about that because he's had a number of calls and we're continuing to do this with, with uh, big, box, big box stores, uh, grocery stores and others, uh, just to have the conversation about what they are doing uh, to commend those that are doing the right things to sort of talk about best practices and we're gonna to continue to do that as well. So this is a lot of informal discussion on the part of the city with businesses that are still open. Uh, but this gives us a chance to also make some site visits when we hear a, a, a concern raised by a resident. Mr. Manager, maybe you can kind of elaborate on that because I think um, members of council may be aware of what you've been up to the last couple of days in that, on that score. Yeah, Mayor, that's a good point. Um, I think you've all seen over the course, particularly in the last three or four days, uh, our local media has done a really good job of highlighting uh, what our local businesses are doing uh, in, in their places of business to reduce the opportunity for spread of the virus, uh, whether it be signage, uh, sanitizers, wipes. Uh, I know a number of places have uh, have put in the protective barriers uh, and, uh, and, and obviously people are allowed to, to wear masks and, and protect themselves if they are uh, a, a retailer uh, or work for a retailer. So all very good practices. Uh, we have had uh, some outreach with the executive director of the South Carolina Retailers Association. Uh, I spoke with her as recently as last night, uh, provided them with a copy of the ordinance. They did have some concerns. Uh, I forwarded uh, to you all last night uh, the information that we had received here at City Hall, uh, so you all would have the benefit of that information. I think our city attorney has, a, has done a good job of taking uh, that feedback and making the changes uh, last night and this morning, of which you have now on the table made an amendment to adopt those things, particularly dealing with the, uh, the undue hardships, uh, the removal of the, uh, the barrier language and uh, those types of things. So those discussions are ongoing. Uh, we are working with our own communications department uh, to highlight some of the effective measures. Uh, we're talking about you know coordinated signage and those types of things. So the city's trying to act in a in a coordination fashion to make sure that number one we're communicating this out. Uh, number two, people understand what is being required here. And I very much appreciate uh, Rebecca Leach uh, and her leadership from the South Carolina South Carolina Retailers Association uh, and her responsiveness uh, in this process. She also did offer to us that if uh, we see a store or a situation that perhaps is, is not in compliance, uh, that they're very much willing to, uh, to help us uh, to bring about positive changes in, in, to that effect. So very pleased with that. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, now we'll proceed to a vote on the, amend, the amendment to the ordinance. Clerk will call the roll. Yes, sir. Just, just to be clear, one. excuse me, just to be clear, are we addressing the requested amendment by uh, council member. I'm sorry, by council member. Stall. Was that an amendment? Council member Stahl? Change, change the and to or. Okay, if there are no objections, I'll in we'll include that in the uh, amendment. Okay, so we'll vote on the, on the revised version okay. as, as adjusted. This is a vote to approve the amendments that have been proposed. Council Member DeWorkin is abstained. Council Member Fleming? Aye. Council Member Gibson? Aye. Council Member Brasington? Aye. Council Member Stahl? Aye. Council Member Dow? Aye. Mayor White? Aye. Um, Number C? Ma Mayor, can I? Uh, this is John DeWorkin. Do you, do you mind? I, I'd like to make a clarification here. Okay. Um, that my abstaining is a recusal. Uh, my abstaining is a recusal because I do have a conflict, not abstaining because I don't wish to vote. So I just want to clarify that. Right. Uh, okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, sitting to the to the vote on the ordinance uh, as amended. Okay. Council Member DeWorkin is abstained. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Gibson? Aye. 
Council Member Brasington? Aye. Council Member Stahl? Aye. Council Member Dow? Aye. Mayor White? Aye. Okay, thank you, members of council. We'll continue to uh, follow developments and uh, we have to have any further. Action.